let me tell you something that's going on in the stock market right now. Uh, the stock market, BuzzFeed Inc., uh, is going through the roof right now. There's a feeding frenzy um, for their stock. People are, uh, are very excited because BuzzFeed has said they're going to use um, OpenAI, ChatGPT, any of these things, and they'll they'll start having computers write stories. So you, you know those people, so think of money. Oh, isn't that great? Um, this is this is following um, Microsoft investing ten billion dollars in OpenAI, which is the maker of ChatGPT. And BuzzFeed has announced OpenAI is open for business at BuzzFeed. I will tell you that every show we do, everything that we do, is made by hand. It is, um, we will not sell out. I'm talking about the Glenn Beck program. We will not sell out and have our shows written by machines. Um, we, will, we will do our own research and and dig deep. We, I don't, I'm not a technophobe. I believe, you know, Google has been a good thing in research. It's been a good thing. So I have no problem using devices, but I will not replace people with machines, AI. Now that's going to put anybody who does that, it's going to put them in the exact opposite position as BuzzFeed. You'll have a harder time making money because you refuse to lose our humanity. But I will go a step further. I am not ready for what they are now calling a brain transparency. I want to play something to you uh, that is uh, hopefully eye-opening. This is a clip, and we have the full 30-minute uh, seminar on this. This is just the first clip from the World Economic Forum. It, there was a speech on technology, and uh, it features a video that we'll have in here. This video is like a little cartoon, and it shows how technology could monitor your brain waves and make you more productive at work. This is shocking enough, but what is said after is even more so. Here's a clip, again, from the World Economic Forum. Listen. First off, a video. Uh, it's going to make you see the future and understand a wonderful future where we can use brainwaves to fight crime, be more productive, and find love. That's wonderful. wonderful. You're in the zone. Even you can't believe how productive you've been. Your memo is finished, your inbox is under control, and you're feeling sharper than you have in a decade. Sensing your joy, your playlist shifts to your favorite song, sending chills up your spine as the music begins to play. You glance at the program running in the background on your computer screen and notice a now familiar sight that appears whenever you're overloaded with pleasure, your theta brainwave activity decreasing in the temporal regions of your brain. You mentally move the cursor to the left and scroll through your brain data over the past few hours. You can see your stress levels rising as the deadline to finish your memo approached, causing a peak in your beta brainwave activity right before an alert popped up, telling you to take a brain break. But what's that unusual change in your brain activity when you're asleep? It started earlier in the month. You send a text message to your doctor with a mental swipe of your cursor. Could you take a quick look at my brain data? Anything to worry about? Your mind starts to wander to the new colleague on your team, whom you know you shouldn't be daydreaming about, given the policy against intra-office romance. But you can't help fantasizing just a little. <laughs> but then you start to worry that your boss will notice your amorous feelings when she checks your brain activity and shift your attention back to the present. You breathe a sigh of relief when the email she sends you later that day congratulates you on your brain metrics from the past quarter, which have earned you another performance bonus. You head home, jamming to the music, with your work-issued brain-sensing earbuds still in. When you arrive at work the next day, 
a somber cloud has fallen over the office. Along with emails, text messages, and GPS location data, the government has subpoenaed employees' brainwave data from the past year. They have compelling evidence that one of your coworkers has committed massive wire fraud. Now, they're looking for his co-conspirators. You discover they are looking for synchronized brain activity between your coworker and the people he has been working with. While you know you're innocent of any crime, you've been secretly working with him on a new startup venture. Shaking, you remove your earbuds. Stop for a second, please. Stop. How many feel comfortable with this? This, remember, was introduced as, you know, your future and showing you how exciting things can happen in your future. You'll be able to increase your productivity. We'll be able to fight crime. You'll be able to find love. Who's comfortable with just this? Now, let me just play the beginning of uh, one of the eggheads at the World Economic Forum talking about this. Go ahead. You have the rest? What do you think? Is it a future you're ready for? You may be surprised to learn that it's a future that has already arrived. Everything in that video that you just saw is based on technology that is already here today. Artificial intelligence has enabled advances in decoding brain activity in ways that we never before thought possible. You've heard a lot about AI over the past few years. Here at Davos, it's been the talk of the hour. But I want to talk about it in a different way, which is the ability to decode brainwave activity. After all, what you think, what you feel, it's all just data. Data that in large patterns can be decoded using artificial intelligence. Consider this, the average person thinks thousands of thoughts each day. As a thought takes form, like a math calculation, you're happy, you're tired, you're hungry, you're elated. Neurons are firing in your brain, emitting tiny electrical discharges. As a particular thought takes form, hundreds of thousands of neurons fire in characteristic patterns that can be decoded with EEG, or electroencephalography, and AI-powered devices. In fact, what you're seeing here is my brain activity while I'm wearing a simple device like the one on the right. We're not talking about implanted devices of the future. I'm talking about wearable devices that are like Fitbits for your brain. It used to be that there was very little we could tell from EEG activity. But already, using consumer wearable devices, these are headbands, uh, hats that have sensors that can pick up your brainwave activity, earbuds, headphones, tiny tattoos that you can wear behind your ear. We can pick up emotional states, like are you happy or sad or angry? We can pick up and decode faces that you're seeing in your mind. Simple shapes, numbers, your PIN number to your bank account. It's not just your brain activity here that we can pick up. We can also pick up your brain activity in different places, like as your neurons fire from your brain down your arm and send signals to your hand to tell you how to type, move. All of that can be decoded through electromyography, and that's what you're seeing here is a device now in the form of a simple wearable watch that can pick up that activity. And in one of the pivotal acquisitions of the field, Meta acquired this company, Control Labs, in 2019 because major tech companies are investing in helping to make these devices universally applicable as the way in which we interact with the rest of our technology. In fact, the coming okay, future... Stop. We are, um, we are there, gang. Everything, Stu, you remember, you remember the crazy days back in the 90s when I would talk about this stuff, and it was really, truly science fiction. It was science fiction. It was a prediction from people like Ray Kurzweil of where we were headed in the very near future. Um, and when you said very near future, it seemed like it was a long way away. You know, it was 2020, 2030, this would begin to happen. 
And I've been I've been telling you um, since 2016, I, I started to get very, very specific that our jobs are going to be in danger. Our jobs are going to be in danger because things like AI will be able to take jobs away from people. This is why um, when I've ever spoken of universal basic income, I have not dismissed it um, out of hand as un-American. Universal basic income, as it's been debated, has is wrong, and I do not think it's an answer for anything. I think it will only cause more problems. However, what I have said is we have to discuss something because what's going to happen is these tech companies like Microsoft, uh, Google, and others, they will start to create things that take the jobs. You won't be able to have a job. And, you know, if you think that uh, creative jobs, well, I have a creative job. But it, it will take your creative job. It can already write and perform vocally and uh, with instruments any style of music, and you have no idea you're listening to an algorithm. No idea. Humans are not involved. Try chat G, uh, GPT. Ask it anything. And you can't tell that you're not uh, in an in interaction, really, with a machine. It is so far beyond a Google search. These things are going to impact everything. For instance, Microsoft is now working on releasing, and I guess it's an app or a system, that you say, I want to develop a website, and you tell the AI, and it will develop it for you. Already, images can be um, produced using AI. You describe what you want to see, and it might, in 10 seconds, come up with a hundred different images that could be photorealistic, uh, and 80 of them might suck, 10 of them might be eh, but five of them might be really good. This is only going to get better and better and better and better. So now, what do we do? Are you comfortable? Um, with your brain waves being taken. Remember, they just told you that they can get your PIN code. Your PIN code. It's not a bunch of useless data. They can get down into everything. Now, if you think that if you think this is you know something on the horizon it's not going to happen you're sadly mistaken because it is already being put to use in factories and i'll explain that to you coming up in 60 seconds if you remember and i don't know how many people do there was a story out of china where factories are starting to um uh, force their workers to wear hats and these hats have this wearable technology in it that this woman was just speaking about now this story came out two maybe three years ago and it monitors the brain waves and they can see who's paying attention and who's not it also can give them like a little electric shock if they happen to not be paying attention and uh it's a little freaky because the corporations know everything about these people. And remember, the corporations are in a public-private partnership with the government. When she says to this group um, at Davos, are you ready for you know, wearable uh, technology to scan brainwaves? The crowd is kind of mixed. You, know, you hear kind of like, no, not really. But she's talking to the elite. They're not going to be the ones in the office. They're going to be the ones monitoring everybody's brain waves. This is why this is so dangerous to be discussed only with the elites. They are deciding right now what kind of technology 
they will be using to keep us in line and to keep us productive. And you're going to have a hard time getting a job if you don't want this technology. These are the things that um, are right here, right now.